Continuing on from our last episode, we're going over Loke, a cost 7 Beast Mastery Talent pet, Spirit Beast. Elusive, Stealth, Untargetable. Damage this ally would deal is unpreventable. So let's look what we got here. Cost 7, 8, 8 ally with Elusive, Stealth, and Untargetable. You can't ping them with abilities, you can't protect against them, and you can't attack them. This is kind of a, uh, kind of a hard card to get rid of. Uh, it's for Beast Mastery only, so you can't put any Marksmanship talents or Survival talents in your deck. And I read a lot of comments about this card on the forum saying that Loke really isn't that powerful of a card compared to Avatar of the Wild, and I say that you should combine the two in a uh, new type of deck. Um, this is a pretty nice ally, and people said that he was weak because he didn't have ferocity, but the damage that he can deal is unpreventable, so that's going to get through Paladins, that'll get through various other effects that prevent damage. Um, and he does arcane damage to boot. I kind of like this guy, actually. The next card up is Lightning Flash, and this is for Hunters. Equipment, Weapon, Gun, Ranged 1, and Cost of 4. It has Long Ranged and Ranged Dual Wield. The Ranged Dual Wield is pretty interesting. Costs uh, 2 to attack with it, and 3 range damage. This is pretty staple. Um, for an Uncommon, this is alright. I would imagine you can combine two of these, or you can combine it with another ranged weapon. And I know there's some... I believe there's some core cards that say if you have an additional ranged weapon, you could do certain things. So maybe you could pull something off with that. But other than that, I don't think this will see a lot of tournament play, but definitely some constructive play. Lena Neville, a cost one ally on Dead Priest. I think that's a play on the name Cruella Deville, if you've ever seen 101 Dalmatians. Uh, anyway, let's get to the text of the card. Uh, one attack, two health. Won't stay around for too long, and she has men two, which is really cool. But um, I think if you play her on turn one, there's a good chance if you're up against Rush that it'll, it'll just die very quickly. But looks like she's more useful for her stash ability. Your hero heals two damage from target ally. That could be pretty handy in a bind. And I think this card will be a definer for priests. Leap of Faith. Instant ability, holy, cost two, no, no talent restrictions. Remove target ability, ally, or equipment you own from the game. Then put it into play under your control. It enters play ready and undamaged. I would imagine this will probably be used for allies. Um, I can't really see any use for ability or equipment, and I could be proven wrong. Please do, if you can prove me wrong. Um, you could play this. I would play this on bombs, like um, Karen, Sylvanas, all the ma all those major bombs. And uh, basically, if you need an ally alive, and it's low on health, leap of faith it. So next up we have Jarek Valder, cost 2, Organ Rogue. When this ally attacks, you may exhaust target ally. Stash, exhaust target ally. So let's see what we're getting here for cost 2, 2, 3. That's pretty good. Um, this is kind of cruel, giving an alliance ally something to the equivalent of War Stomp. But, um... I think this is pretty nice, and for the, the stash ability is definitely nice if you need to exhaust a target ally. Alright, next up, Paladin ability for cost 2, Inquisition. Target ally deals unpreventable holy damage to itself equal to its attack. Very, very nice. You would feel this is a retribution card, but um, I could see where this will be very helpful for Paladins. I would definitely include this, if not sideboard it. Infiltrate, going off a of Shadow Dance here. Up to two target heroes or allies have Assault 2 and Stealth this turn. Very nice for cost 2, and it's a common, so you'll probably be getting a lot of them if you're buying in bulk. Um, Subtlety? Hell, just put it in any deck. This is pretty nice for rogues. So the next card up, I think, will probably spawn a couple of new decks, and this potentially could be something you can see in the tournament scene. 28 health, Huntsman Gorwal. When he flips, I believe he's cost 4 or 5 on the other side. I'm looking at the flip side of the card. Pets you control have Ferocity. Uh, <laughs> so if you wanted Ferocity on Loke, there you go. Put him in this deck. I'm trying to think of other allies you could use that have Ferocity. You can apply it to Dundee as well, but more than likely you're going to have Dundee out before that flips. But this could be pretty useful. You could, he's also a worgen, so you could also use him to power up King Gen Greymane if you have him. Here's our retribution ability. Holy Vengeance. Ongoing. When an ally you control is destroyed... <laughs> token. You may pay one. If you do, your hero deals two unpreventable holy damage to target hero. This is very nice. Um, so say we're trading allies for allies, 
and he's hitting me with rush, this can kind of slow him down. Because when he kills my allies, I can pay one and deal two unpreventable holy damage to target hero. That's more damage coming out from one card. That's pretty impressive for an ability. I'm thinking in the future with uh, token decks, if you decide to make a token deck with paladins, if you could somehow destroy the tokens, you could pay one and deal two unpreventable holy damage. Man, if that pay one wasn't there, you could just spawn all these bob tokens from a card. I forget the exact name of the card from the last set. Just boom, 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 two unpreventable holy damage everywhere. Man, would that be abused if that were real. <laughs> now here's a card a buddy of mine doesn't like, and I love it. It's like Holy Shock reprinted from the Hunt for Illidan set. Cost 6, Holy Wrath. Your hero deals 4 unpreventable holy damage to each opposing hero and ally. Plus an additional 4, that character is a demon, dragonkin, or elemental. Uh, obviously, I would probably try to pack this in a tournament level deck, because you may see dragonkin and definitely elementals. I don't know about demons as much, per se, but you'll definitely see them. This is a very nice card for paladins. This next one here is for Death Knights. Gargoyle, hey, they get their own pet. Sweet. Unfortunately, though, it's an unholy talent, so you can't put Blood or Frost in your deck, but I digress. Ferocity. At the end of your turn, if this ally is undamaged, put him into his owner's hand. I remember writing an article about this guy for my blog, um, that guy over there. And let's start with what we got here. Cost 4, 5-5. Five, five. The way I would play this card is, if I were to put it in my deck, I would use this to... Um, trade off with my opponent's allies. He's got ferocity, and he has to be damaged. If he's undamaged, he's going to go back into your hand, and you're going to have to pay an extra four. Although, you can keep doing that and not damage him, and keep paying four every time for a constant five damage to the opposing hero. So that could be a viable win strategy, but I'd also like to use this guy to get rid of allies, definitely. Next up, we have Fraznak the Furious. Awesome card art, by the way. Ally, I'm looking at the flip side here. Allies you control have an Assault 1. Uh, I can definitely tell you right there, that's going to be a Fury deck. Um, you know what? You could probably use utilize that with Time is Money and various other cards that'll give you boosts to goblins. I might actually build the deck around this guy. Should be interesting. Here's another card that's going off the uh, basis of Arcane Damage Matters theme in this set. Elmira Moon Surge, cost 5, a little expensive, but let's see what she does. Elusive cannot be attacked. At the start of your turn, this ally may deal 1 arcane damage to target hero or ally for each arcane card you control. Nice. So you could probably um, stack up on arcane damage allies and just go from there and deal additional damage. I like this card. A little expensive, but I do like this card. Oh, uh, did I mention you should combine this card with Moonfire? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to go in a new balance druid of mine. Definitely. Alright, here's one for the epic lulls. Cost six, two arms. This is the epic ability. Avatar of the Wild was the epic ability for druids and hunters last set. This set is for rogues and warriors. Ongoing. Your hero has dual wield. Melee weapons you control have plus five attack. You pay five less to strike with melee weapons. Self-explanatory. Awesome. 